similar to Jesus' declaration in the book, I mean, in, to Peter in the Gospels that upon the revelation of this dissertation, um, Christ will build his church. Wow. Um, this teaching is a solid framework of understanding the gospel being the systematics of theology. I'm going to unpack a lot of material and keep it moving so whatever jumps out at you, y'all try to grab it. She was telling me that we got 10 minutes, it seemed like left in church, so I'm going to hit it and go. All right? <laughs> All right, so um, as I know, um, and many of us have experienced, God is always strategically moving, maneuvering in the midst of his omniscient nature outside the regular limits of our present situation. Yet somehow we still maintain a proclivity to be surprised by his supreme wisdom being beyond our capacity to comprehend in our current state and or understanding. Um, I stand before you on an assignment, assignment to break the ties of a false gospel that many of us have was ushered into. Um, you know, it's amazing to me that many of us are struggling, um, yet we are called children of Christ. Um, we're not living um, according to the confession in which we, you know, basically say that we are. Um, we're battling against a defeated enemy, um, but hey, uh, we're going to keep moving. Um, Isaiah 5 and 13 draws a direct parallel between our existence in captivity with our lack of understanding. Also, popular writer and politician, um, Johann Wolfgang, uh, once quoted that whatever you cannot understand, you cannot possess. So we wonder why we confess Christ, but we are not walking in the prosperity that the Bible puts, states clearly that we are to walk in as sons and daughters of God. Um, the key to the kingdom of God is based on the confession that um, that I indirectly referenced earlier. Um, first um, book we're going to go to our uh, passage of scripture is Matthew 16 and 15. <laughs> All right, so I'm um, just going to jump into it. Uh, uh, it starts, it reads as such. Um, he said to them, well, who do they say that I am? Right. Simon right. Peter answered, you are the Christ, mm -hmm. the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Wow. But my father who is in heaven <clears throat> also say to you that you are Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. My and, the gate of, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall have, shall have been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Then he warned the disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. Um, we should all ask ourselves, what was this foundation in which Jesus was unfolding? Um, the Bible declares that let him that has an ear that let him that has a hear, a ear hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Understand that the Bible obviously states that upon the Lord Jesus Christ the church is built. The whole gospel is about Jesus. Mm. To elaborate further, the whole Bible is fully about Jesus. Yeah. The Bible does provide instruction on godly living, but it is not a book of instruction before leaving the earth. The Bible is Jesus revealed. Mm. 
The gospel is properly defined as a proclamation or announcement of the redemption, restoration preached by Jesus and the apostles, which is the central content of the Christian revelation. Paul instructed and explained this to the church of Corinth in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Um, and now let me remind you, since it seems to have escaped you, brethren of the gospel, the, cl the glad tidings of salvation, which I proclaim to you, which you welcomed and accepted, and upon which your faith rests, and by which you are saved, if you hold fast and keep firmly what I preach to you, mm -hmm. unless you believe that first without effect and all for nothing. For I pass on to you first of all what also I have received, that Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, died for our sins in accordance with what the scriptures foretold. That he was buried, that he arose, and on the third day, as the scripture foretold. Um, there Paul, as clearly as he could, described the gospel as not being about you, but being about Christ. Uh -huh. When we accept that announcement as fact, we begin to be enabled to turn away from ourselves and our past, because through the gospel, you are pardoned. Um, former pastor Dave Harvey once stated that the gospel is the heart of the Bible. Um, everything in scripture is either preparation for the gospel, presentation of the gospel, or the participation in the gospel. I once read about a, read a book by Pastor Matt Chandler, probably entitled The Explicit Gospel, where he directly contrasts God's working in our lives from vantage points of ground and air. The gospel on the ground points to God's personal connection with man and gospel in the air is God's cosmic uh, restoration, similar to microeconomics or macroeconomics for my business majors. Uh, think about it. God is so amazing that he created the sun, the moons, the stars, and the earth. He holds gravity around 9.8 meters per second squared, which is perfect because it enables us to walk along the earth, but it doesn't crush us to the ground, nor does it allow us to float up into space. Yet that God, the God that provided plants to release oxygen, which we need to live, but then come right back and create us to release the carbon dioxide to provide for the plants. Yeah, that God. Time can't hold him. Space can't hold him. And no one can comprehend him. He is God. Romans 11 and 34 states, who, who knows the mind of God? In the beginning, out of nothing, he created everything. In Paul's letters to Colossians in chapter 4, I mean chapter 1, verse 16 states, For him, in him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Even in Revelations, he's called Alpha and Omega. In essence, before there was a beginning, he was, and after there is an end, he is. Time for the whole That's a micro look at God. That's God in the air, as Matt Chandler describes it, or as I describe it, so proper celestial look at God. Even Romans 8 and 22 speaks about Adam's fall affecting all creation. It reads, for we know that the whole creation grown up and travailed in pain together unto now. Christ's death was for all creation, including the earth. Sin affects all creation. That's why the perfect one comes. There will be a new earth and a new heaven, which is mentioned in Revelation 21 and 1, uh, which reads, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. New here is derived from the Greek word kainos, which means to restore or bring back by renewing. So some scholars believe that earth will be restored to its pre-fall state. Um, that's debatable, but it's true that even the earth is purged by Jesus' sacrifice. So there's more of a celestial look at God, but we can't attempt to express God as just such because he's much more. Mm -hmm. Which leads us into looking at him as our Savior, our Lord, our Christ, our Deliverer, my Provider, my Healer. He's a mother to the motherless, a father to the fatherless, a brother of sister. He's a friend to the friendless. He's all that and more. He exists outside of time, but he stepped down into time. Um, this is the gospel on the ground. Um, check it. God is everything that I mentioned before, yet he has the ability to know the hairs of your head. Um, Isaiah 43 and 1 says that he calls you by name. He knows your every thought, every action, every desire. But the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believing in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He knows you nasty, but he loves you. But his love endures. Yes, yes. That's major because he told Jeremiah that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. He knew Jeremiah before he was born. Um, when he placed Adam in the garden, he had you in his mind. He had already called you. You were already his special possession. Ephesians 1 and 5 states that he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. Please don't stone me, but predestined to me means that before he created Adam, he had already knew that Adam was going to fall. Yes. To predestine is to decree in advance. Yeah. He knew that Adam's fall would affect, well, in effect, or curse all creation. He knows and knew all your issues, but his love transcends every fault you have. His love transcends every mistake, past, present, and oh, future. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but the Bible says your righteousness is like filthy rags. Yeah. There is no one righteous, not even one, which is Romans 3 and 10, so we all don't need the blood. Um, Romans 5 and 20 states that 
where sin abounded, grace did more, much more abound. Yeah. I'll read that again. Romans 5 and 20 states that where sin abounded, Yay. grace did much more abound. Or as Wade Mouth New Testament puts it, where, it, where sin increased, grace has overflowed. Yes. Therefore, right. having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our yes. Lord Jesus yes. Christ, mm -hmm. through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. Mm -hmm. And we take pride in the hope of glory of God. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Oh I tell you the solemn truth that the one who hears my message and believes the ones who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned, but has crossed over from death to life. Yes, Ephesians yes. 22 and 8, verse 9. For by the grace you are saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. This is a gift of God. It's not from works so that no one can boast. <laughs> Romans 3 and 28. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from works of the law. John 6 and 39. And this is the will of God. That I should not lose even one of all those that God has given me. But I should raise them to eternal life of the last day. Sorry to break tradition, but you are not saved by works. You're saved by Jesus. The praise is already paid. Paul stated that no one can declare righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. The problem with many believers is we're trying to clean the fish before we catch them. Straight up, it's not your job to clean them. All we have to do is give them the gospel and let And like Jesus said in John 14 and 26, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was sent in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Also, John 16 and 8 states, when he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will provide the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. The gospel isn't about us. It's about all about Christ. It's about God love enduring and salvation of man through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus' last command was to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's the gospel, Jesus. He has to be the head, he has to be the foundation, he has to be the focus. In comparison to God, we have to be willing to forsake everything of this world. That includes family. Um, so all in all, we have to approach God from an explicit perception. When we place God in his correct posture, it causes us to belittle our situations and know that all things work together for the good of the of the dog God. Eyes have not seen your ears heard what God has prepared for those that he loves. We can't even comprehend that he's prepared for us. We, all we have to do is line up and follow Christ. A mind like Christ is a mind of selflessness. So all in all, I want to leave you with three points. God is a sustainer of all things. Yet personal enough to come up, come off the throne and see about you. Number three, Jesus plus nothing equals everything. He needs no help. last thing. Um, nothing is impossible to them that love the Lord. Right. So walk in it. Come on, Let's man. focus on Christ, brother. Amen. Amen. Amen.